2022 was filled with a lot of blessings and a lot of hard work. I am definitely looking forward to a fresh start and a new year. Now that it's over, I think I get it. That you but when I tried to paint with lots of color, I always felt like it looked like it belonged in a kid's room. This video is about the learning process, the things I've struggled with in the last few years, and what I hope to change in the new year. If you're struggling too, hopefully we can learn together. Find a little spot in the shade, pink lemonade, pink lemonade. I feel like I just learned how to blend recently. Everything is going my way, pink lemonade, pink lemonade. I have always loved color, but I have struggled with creating a style that looks grown up. And it's not that blending is super duper hard. You just need to know what you need to know in order to have success. Before I start a new project, I usually look for some kind of inspiration, whether it's a fellow artist, Instagram, or this pillow on my bed. I wanted to mimic the print on my pillow. I started by using some painter's tape and I gave a base coat to one portion of the dresser with Hay Sailor and the other portion of the dresser with White Swan. It's important to give your piece a good base coat. It's kind of like priming the surface. You also want to let that base coat sit for at least a few hours, if not overnight. This will create the foundation to blend on. If you don't do this, it's a lot harder. People would come into my store, and this is what I would hear on repeat. Oh, this would look so cute in a little girl's room. When I heard it over and over again, inside I would just get really annoyed. Sometimes I feel like I make the furniture too precious, and I don't want to mess it up. So I decided to create some blending boards so I could practice and have a reminder of how the colors work together. I took a couple pictures of my pillow so I could refer back to them as I created this. This purple color is a mix of Kissing Booth and Hay Sailor. It's helpful to use several different brushes. One brush for every color and some neutral brushes to blend the colors together. I also want to note that there's nothing wrong with creating beautiful things for children. I just wanted to create things that I would put in my own home. Debbie, this is all you can do is stuff for little girls. I wanted to be a grown-up artist and I just kept trying to tweak it. In the beginning when there were only a couple brands of furniture paint, most people were painting with neutrals. I think soft neutral colors are a lot easier to make look elegant and sophisticated. I have many friends like the IOD sisters and Jamie Ray and others who just love neutrals and their style is so pretty. Sometimes I feel like they're rolling their eyes at me because I just love color. I mean, they're always really nice and really respectful, and this is probably something that is just me in my own head. But I often think that my life would be easier and maybe my videos would get higher views if I painted with white and tan and gray. But that's just not what um, makes my heart race, and I can't get enough of color, but it's been a struggle, as you will find out. To create the flower print on the pillow, I rolled out some paper clay, and I used stamps to make an impression. I don't know at this point if it will actually make an impression, no pun intended, but... I wanted to try it. I'd never done it before and I knew it could end up looking really bad or maybe good. So I'm just rolling it out, cutting the edges, eyeballing it, winging it, stamping into the clay. The clay does shrink up a little as it dries. So at this point, I'm a little nervous. One day I'm scrolling through Instagram and there is the turquoise iris and she has this beautiful, colorful buffet and it just looks so just grown up. This woman is using all the colors and I wanted to paint like that. That is what I had been trying to do for years. I think this mold is called the Laurel Mold from IOD. 
It helps if you lightly dust with cornstarch before you put in the paper clay. I'm using this mold because it creates a border around the rough edges of the stamped clay. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. You can get this at your local craft supply. It's non-toxic, it dries clear, it's very strong. You want to glue your molds down while they are still wet. If you wait for them to dry and then glue them later, they curl up and you won't get an even flush adhesion. And so I, there is a video that you can watch called the Salty Kiss Finish where I really tried to get Dion's look and I sort of got it, but man, I was spending way too much time and way too much effort and getting about halfway there. DIY paint is different. The clay has dried overnight and you can see here where it has shrunk in some places and created gaps. So I'm going in with some more glue and little tiny pieces of clay to kind of fill in like wood putty. Sometimes I swear if you think about watercolor paint, oil paints, or acrylic paints, and how different they are, and how the methods are very different for getting good results, it's the same with furniture paint. It really depends on the formula. Just like if you go into the grocery store, and you're looking at the bread, and there is sourdough, and there is wheat, and there is gluten-free. If you lined up all these paints, they all have a very different formula. Now that the clay is dry, I'm painting over it with white swan. Even though it doesn't change the color very much, it primes the surface so I can blend pigments over the top. DIY paint is very unique because it has just nine ingredients and it is mostly pigment and clay. So it dries really fast but it cures really slow. You can water it way down and reactivate it weeks later. You can get it to blend like a watercolor if you spray it with water, but it has the richness of an oil paint because of all the pigment. I painted the stamped clay with a coat of white paint and let it dry so that I would have a prime surface to add the pigment. If I were to add pigment over a surface that had been sealed or was slick, the pigment would slide off. Just dip your brush in water and then dip your brush in the pigment and apply to the chalky porous surface. Spray it and blend it. Shortly after that, she created a tutorial. And then I called her up and I asked her if she would like to come to the DIY boot camp and teach a workshop on blending in real life. One of the great things about clay paint or a chalk type paint is that you don't have to sand or prime in most cases and that eliminates a lot of the prep work. However, prepping your surface is really important when it comes to blending, especially with DIY paint. When you first put that coat on, it's going to dry really fast. You want to let it dry overnight because a wet brush or a second coat will reactivate the paint and you will not have nearly as much control. So if you think about a canvas and how you prime that with gesso, it's kind of the same with DIY paint. Dion comes to the workshop. Everybody got to pick a small piece to blend on and I picked this old cabinet door that had been painted with latex paint. And she's showing everyone how she blends with the water bottle and layering the paint and mixing it together. Everybody is doing it. I'm trying to do it on my cabinet door and it's just running off. I didn't know back then was that the slick latex surface was making it impossible to have any kind of control. I thought that I was just a bad painter because I didn't know and everybody else seemed to be doing it. I was so frustrated I wanted to cry and scream because I had been waiting to learn how to do this. I was the only one who wasn't doing it. Your surface needs to be optimal for the blending situation. And if you are familiar with furniture transfers, you've probably heard that it's best practice to apply a sealer over the paint, let that dry before rubbing on the transfer. If you don't, then the paint can come up and stick to the back of the transfer and you have wasted your transfer. Having said all that, I will tell you that 99% of the time, I never put on a sealer before rubbing on a transfer.
Again, if you let the paint sit for 24 hours before rubbing on a transfer, most of the time it will go on without a hitch. So if you think about an adobe house, DIY paint adheres really well because it's mostly clay, but you can still reactivate it with water if you haven't sealed it. DIY paint doesn't have any levelers or chemicals or anything in it that's going to create any kind of barrier. The main thing about this paint is that it is mostly pigments and clay and therefore you can water it way down. You can paint inside, you don't have to wear gloves. I love you, Madeline. Another reason why I don't put a sealer down before I put the transfer on is once you add that sealer, everything is locked in and you can't change it anymore. You can paint right over the transfers and then add a little bit of water and pull that paint off the transfer. So this gives me a lot of options. I love DIY paint because it's mistake proof. You can add water, add more paint, blend, and keep working with it until you're happy with it. Nothing is written in stone until you put that sealer on. A big tip for blending is to apply two colors side by side while they're still wet. One brush for each color and then use a neutral brush to blend them together. Make sure your brush is going in all different directions and use the water bottle to spray the paint and get the two colors to form a new color. I'm blending paint right over the top of the transfer. Then I just take a damp rag and wipe off the excess paint to reveal the transfer again. Dion has taught me many things since that first workshop four years ago. She's always saying, play with the paint, experiment, you learn by doing, and she is right. Dion and I are teaching a paint workshop on January 20th in Bernie, Texas. Our workshops are designed to provide encouragement and fun and hopefully to give you the courage to try new things. My blending kind of looked like stripes and I wanted it to look like fluffy clouds. But for some reason, it just never dawned on me that you actually need to move your brush up and down and across and maybe around just in different directions to get those colors to harmonize. It really helps to think of your furniture like canvas art. I usually wait until the very end to use the pigments for the details. I like to think of them as powdered sugar on a donut. If you use the pigments too soon and then you end up painting over it, it's gonna swallow up the pigment because our paint is so heavily pigmented. You have your piece of furniture, it is all blended, and it dries really porous. You can go in and use the pigment, outline specific little details. The pigment is very forgiving because you can spray it with water or you can get your finger wet and soften up the blend and it is like the powdered sugar on the donut. I love to use the pigments to create shadows and depth in tight little areas like the seams of the drawers and the details of the furniture, where it would create a lot of time and effort to do that with paint. Because the pigments are easily reactivated, I will let it sit again overnight so it just kind of bakes or cooks in and then I will go back the next day with the wax. I'm definitely attracted to things that are fun and whimsical but I also really love things that look painterly, moody, dark, and bohemian and it has been a journey to try and find the balance between the two. I've heard many artists describe the creative process as a push and a pull. I definitely feel that every time I make something. Now I'm adding the gold wax over the clay molds. Even though I'm not happy with the way the project looks at this point, gold wax makes everything better.
I always start with some kind of inspiration. It helps me focus and get started, which is often the hardest part. But at some point, you have to let it go and go with your instincts. That gives me a starting point, and it gets rid of that frozen stage fright feeling when you don't know where to begin. I feel like beginning is often the hardest part. This is the point where I step back and analyze what I've done so far. I'm not liking the stark white against the deep colors on the other side of the dresser. So I mixed French millinery with a little bit of kissing booth and I'm going through and I'm softening up the white and giving it a pale lavender color. I love white. I see so many people painting with white and it's beautiful. My mother loved white, but every time I try and do it, I end up painting over it. I meet people in real life. I often hear that they think my projects start off looking like a hot mess and they have a lot of doubts as to whether it's gonna work out. I feel the same thing. I really like the blending that's more organic and it kind of moves across the surface. At this point, I'm concerned about the markings from the previous hardware, so I go back to the clay and try and figure out a way to cover those marks up because I'm going to use a totally different knob. I think we may be on the wrong side of Pasadena. Every time I try to problem solve or I get a new idea, I feel like it's risky because at this point I've invested a lot of time and I've used a lot of materials and I'm telling myself, Debbie, this could be good or it could ruin it. And I have to fight with the battle in my head. Do I try it or do I not? I'm going to count my blessings like I never dropped out of school. I'm going to give forgiveness. Once I apply the gold wax, I'm starting to get happy and excited about the project, but I still have those big holes and the marks from the previous hardware. This is the point where the project starts to turn a corner. I'm starting to get really excited about all the colors and I've got 20 brushes on the table. I usually end up with a whole bunch of brushes because I don't want to stop and take the time to wash them. I just keep going with more pigments and more shading. I'm having fun at this point. I'm in the creative flow, but I'm also totally ignoring the fact that I have a huge problem to solve. I have to somehow get rid of those holes from the previous hardware and the markings from them, but I don't want to stop having fun. So I'm just like, la 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 la. It's like I got nothing left to lose. This right here. We put the ingredients on our can and there's only nine and it's mostly clay. All the clay in the paint is how I'm going to solve my problem. You can let the paint sit up and thicken and you can use it like a plaster or a texture medium or a creative wood putty. I was hollow and closed and the morning I could not see. I have used this method many times on other pieces of furniture where the veneer is chipping or I want to create an old world textured style. There's a video I did a few months ago where I take a deep dive into this old world textured method. I will put the link below. I am Once I added the textured paint to cover up the holes, I added more textured paint in the nooks and crannies of the dresser and in the corners so that the look would be cohesive. A lot of times when you see old world finishes, the paint builds up on the edges. So this was the look that I was going for. I have fixed my problem, but now I have to go back and blend in all of the textured paint. We recently moved from Encinitas back to Solana Beach, so it's taken me a while to post a video. But I'm hoping that this move will enable me to share more content with you. I hope to encourage you to push past the fear of trying new things. I want to share with you what goes right and what goes wrong and hopefully answer questions that you may be afraid to ask. If you have any questions like that, leave them in the comments. Mercy. I beg you to come and take away. I know it's been a while since I posted a video. We moved our store in Encinitas. We moved three miles from Encinitas to Solana Beach, and it was a huge 
project. This is the point where I'm satisfied with all of the blending, so I'm applying the clear wax to lock in all of the color and provide protection. I'm also using some dark wax, but I'm using it over the clear wax so I have more control. Mercy. Mercy. Applying the wax will dramatically deepen the color, and it can even make it look sort of streaky or severe. Let that wax dry for 24 hours, and then go back and buff it with a soft cloth. It will buff up to a beautiful, buttery sheen. The white wax and the dark wax can be used to create even more depth with your project. I'm putting the white wax in the middle of the dresser and the dark wax towards the edges and in the nooks and crannies to create more depth. Always use clear wax underneath so you have more control. My favorite place to be is right here. Not thinking out. Next video is an art studio tour and the story of why we moved from Encinitas back to Cedros. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. To find DIY paint in your area, to sell it in your store, or to find out about the workshop in Texas, click the link below. Thanks for watching. You're like a piece of heaven in a hurricane. And it's bubbling over like a